The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tom's out this morning. I'm here filling in. Right now, starting off Tuesday trading. Tommy O'Brien here with TFNN in St. Petersburg. We got markets in positive territory, folks. s and is up 10 points, trading at 28.93. We got the NASDAQ up 49 points, trading at 79.03. Dow Jones up 108 points, trading 26,007. Once again, a little bit of the story. Bonds, we got higher price, lower yield. The 10-year up seven ticks, 131 flat. We got the 30-year up a point even at 166.03. We have a yield inversion again between the two-year and the 10-year. Fourth consecutive day of a yield inversion on that two and 10. And the dollar index right now, negative 109 ticks, trading at 97.880. Gold contract up $4 at 15.4170. And oil contract up 61 cents at 54.25. Lots of green on the board, 30 minutes in the trading day. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks as we do. We start off the program Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with Kevin and every trading day, folks, right after this program, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Fast Market with Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, breaking down what's going on in this market. You want to talk about defined risk. You want to talk about trading options in this market. You want to talk about premium. Check out the program, folks. Great education every single day. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? All right, good. You know, good start to the day. Good, some good data. Um, we got some good re red book data showing, you know, the comp store sales between chain stores, discount, and department stores. Think about this: up 5.7 percent. Yeah. So even though there's winners and losers in the retail market, the U.S. consumer is still there, Tommy. And, you know. It's getting late in earnings season, as you know. Yes. So the names are starting to thin out a little bit. We'll cover Tiffany's today, which is one of the big ones we have this week. Later in the week, we'll get into some of like Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Nice. But we're going to do something in the beginning of our show today. It's going to be pretty interesting. Okay. And that is we're going to show you why Ford, a company like Ford, using options and using their dividend yield can return – 38% annually. Did you say 38%, Kevin? That's what we're going to with, with the most simple of option strategies, and we're going to show you how to do it. Man, that's that's going to be pretty cool. You check that out. Now, of course, Ford, folks, I mean, I got the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Kevin, a little bit of pop today. Of course, they pulled back on that tariff news at the end of yep. last week. Um, those car companies kind of in the in the crosshairs as the, the trade concerns. Um yeah, I just took a look. I think, Kevin, are we, uh, I think we have about, I pulled it up, and I, so Tiffany's, their earnings coming out tomorrow at, yep. uh, before tomorrow the morning. market, um, and then you got Dollar General, Dollar Tree, it looks like, on Thursday, Thursday before right. the market, and I just pulled up for the S&P 500, folks, it looks like we got 12 companies left, if I'm correct, to, to come right. out with their earnings, um, and Hewlett Packard, HPE, actually, after the market today, but yeah, definitely nearing the trail end of uh of earnings season before we do it all again in a period of about 30 to 60 days not to mention tommy even though we have some good data coming out thursday and friday gdp and in, uh, personal income and outlays it's still labor day week yes and the and the volumes and the overall attention on this market are going to start to thin out a little bit as the week goes on it's pretty remarkable the august we've had in general when you think that august um you know we have yeah, a couple hosts even they're taking a little bit of vacation this week it's a great week usually to take vacation right week before labor day maybe there'll be a little bit of calmness in the markets not exactly what we've seen but maybe we'll see that as we trail off towards friday yeah, normally traders dial it back th this week and get ready for, you know, really the start of fall trading after Labor Day. But I can't remember a summer that's been a better overall trade than, than, than this summer. It has just been spectacular in terms of movement in the market, volatility, everything that you want, up and down moves back and forth. And that being said, that should start to show up in what should be third quarter 
uh, trading revenues for some of these banks. Oh, man, right. So that's something that people, even though net interest margin, that that's why we covered the financials on yesterday's show. Because even though net interest margin is going to be a disaster for these banks uh, during the, the, this past quarter, trading revenues might save some of them. And expectations should be pretty low. So that's why we, we, we thought yesterday to cover those. When it gets thin like this, we're not going to cover names that a lot of people don't want to trade and aren't real popular. What we're going to do is go to themes, and we're going to nice. do, we're going to do themes like yesterday we did financials. Today we're going to do you know cover Tiffany's, but also go into some other things like how you can look at Ford, look at uh, Fiat Chrysler, and look at the returns that you can generate on these at a time when ten-year yields are one point five percent. It is remarkable, man. And I mentioned it at the top of the hour, of course. You have the 10-year, folks. And I'll pull it up here as you go into the world. Um, for bonds, you have the 10-year right now as the system loads. Trading at a yield, folks, of 1.51. And when we pull up the curve, yeah. Kevin, we're looking at a two-year of 1.549. So talk about an inversion um, by more than a few ticks. And that's the fourth day that that's happened as that creeps in. And, of course, we got the September meeting coming up and then uh, all but assured of a rate cut. And and it's kind of just interesting to to try and theorize how that plays into things and where we go from here. And of course, you had, um, I'm, not, I, I'm sure you may have heard it, Kevin, of course, the um, opinion piece by Bill Dudley, former Fed governor of New York, kind of throwing his hat in talking about, and it's just going to be a constant foray, I feel like, of, of rhetoric around the Fed and how that plays in when you have rates just kind of getting squashed. To, to Everyone's going to have an opinion, Tommy, right? and exactly. here's why. Because even though the fundamentals in the U.S. economy are solid and, and healthy. The world is flowing into our dollar and our bonds. And that's what you're seeing. More weak data uh, today from, from the Eurozone. So they're flowing into our bonds, and that's driving down our yields, right? Remember, the, the difference between some of the other uh, inverted yield curves and now is – Ne never have you seen the long end come down to the short end. Yeah. Normally when a, a yield curve inverts, it's that short end spiking. Well, this is the opposite. This is the long end coming down. So, you know, Jerome Powell's got everything he needs in his hand to uninvert or steepen the yield curve. Sure. I mean, folks, if you're looking for a, uh, a refinance, now may be a good time. Not to say we yeah. might not go lower, but man, oh, man, when you're looking at the 10-year at 1.5 and the 30-year coming down as well. I mean, 30-year, I almost had to shake my head, Kevin, up another full point today um, in terms yeah. of price on the 30-year as we just continue marching on for sure. Well, Kevin, of course, we look forward to the program, man, as always. Seems like you guys will have plenty to talk about on the program, folks. They're going to be talking a little bit of earnings, and they're going to be talking about, I heard it, 38%. Man, I'm going to be tuning in, Kevin, to Fast Market to see what kind of trade we'll you guys you are going to be setting up on that Ford trade. 38% in Ford, 29% in Fiat Chrysler. We'll show you how to do it. Those car companies, man, they have had some volatility for sure. Kevin, we appreciate the update, man. And, of course, we look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Tommy, great talking to you, buddy. You too, man. Have a great one. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. I'm going to be talking about, we're going to talk about bonds. We're going to talk about Johnson & Johnson, of course, their settlement, not settlement, their guilty, as in $500 plus million dollars yesterday, but the market liking that as on the lower end of what they had to pay. We'll be talking about a number of news stories. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tommy O'Brien with TFNN. Tom's out today in the morning. He will be back with his live program from 3 till 5 this afternoon. Checking back in on the markets right now. S&P is positive by about six points. We got the Dow up 92. NASDAQ up 40 points. We got notes and bonds. Again, folks, higher price, lower yield. 10-year up six ticks. You got the 30-year up 30 ticks. Quite a move. And the gold contract up four dollars and twenty cents at fifteen forty one forty, and that dollar index backing off about sixty nine ticks at ninety seven nine twenty. Revisiting a couple of stories from the day. First one, consumer confidence declining less than forecast in August. So digging into this. U.S. consumer confidence declined in August by less than forecast as Americans' assessment of current conditions climbed to the highest level in almost 19 years by helped by a job market that remains robust. The conference, the conference board's index eased to 135.1 this month from a revised 135.8, according to data from the New York-based Group Tuesday that exceeded all estimates in a Bloomberg survey of economists. The gauge views on the present situation jumped to 177.2, the highest since November 2000, the expectations index decreased. So key insights from this, the reading shows hiring and income gains are keeping consumers upbeat and assuaging concerns about the economy's prospects in light of slowing global growth, volatile financial markets, and escalating U.S.-China trade tensions. The level of confidence could allow for sustained household spending that remains a mainstay of the economy. Folks, if household spending really decreases, that could be a problem because we've seen, um, you know, the tax cuts, a lot of those going to corporate buybacks, not going to the type of investments that you would want to kind of drive that economy. So what is driving this economy? It is household spending in a dramatic way. If you start to see a hit on that, watch out. The share of respondents who say jobs are currently plentiful jumped to 51.2%, the highest since September 2000. Pretty remarkable. You're talking about almost 19 years. We're going to be in September in about four days. Uh, while the share saying jobs are hard to get declined to the lowest in three months. 
So the expectation gauge declined to 107 from 112.4, and the report follows other confidence gauges that suggest consumer sentiment may be wavering in the U.S. The University of Michigan's gauge dropped to the lowest level since January this month, and Bloomberg's weekly comfort measure recently saw its largest back-to-back -back slide since 2011. So pretty interesting there. Jumping over to another story that was on the radar this morning, J.P. Morgan saying maybe it's time to buy equities again is fast approaching. Pretty remarkable in terms of, I mean, we're almost at highs. I say that as in pretty close. You're looking at a Dow at 26,000. Yeah, we've been higher, but pretty close even in the volatility we've had. So the stock market is starting to look good again to J.P. Morgan Chase and company. After August sell-off, time, the time to buy stocks is approaching. Strategist led by, let me get this one, Ms. Lav. Matejka, maybe, wrote in a note Tuesday saying equities will move higher starting with an uptrend in September. Benchmarks including the S&P 500 index, the Stocks Europe 600 index, and the MSCI Asia Pacific index are poised for their biggest monthly declines since May. So yeah, I mean, you have the biggest monthly declines. You want to catch a falling knife, and I don't even think we're at the point of a falling knife just yet. Doesn't mean we're not going to go higher, but man, we have some volatility, and I've been saying it before. The, the trade concerns, I mean, and to dig into things further, trade concerns, and to pull this up, let me just get back to one of the stories I had up here, because you have China coming out and insisting that it's unaware of the calls Trump to Trump and says tariffs are extreme pressure and not constructive at all. This is going to be a big one, and, and a lot of people, including myself, have struggled to figure out how we get over this obstacle. And this type of rhetoric coming from both sides really makes that difficult. So while we've been advocating a consolidation call during August, and this is J.P. Morgan, we continue to expect that the pullback will not extend for longer than the May one did and still believe the market will advance into year-end, J.P. Morgan strategist wrote. So worldwide sell-off, global equities are poised for their worst month since May. There's your percentage, and this is worldwide, all-country world index. And percentage, we're down about 4% in August. May, quite a tough month. Worldwide, again, not U.S. equities. Worldwide, May, you were down to about 6 so an escalation in trade war between the U.S. and China this month has stoked investor concern about the outlook for the global economy, hurting equities worldwide. Major asset managers, including Legal and & General and Manu Life Investment Management, have taken profit on their risk assets and entered a wait-and-see mode. J.P. Morgan sees a string of positive catalysts that could lift equities out of the doldrums, such as the restart of the ECB's quantitative easing program, you know, you start getting stimulus, that's definitely going to help, as opposed to no stimulus. The potential for a second and bigger rate cut by the Federal Reserve, all but assured, we'll jump over to the Fed Fund Futures in a moment, that we're going to get a rate cut in September, we're going to get one in October. That's what the market is saying when you look at those Fed Fund Futures. So the potential for a second and bigger rate cut by the Federal Reserve, along with signs that activity may have bottomed out and improving technical indicators. I mean... You know, I struggle to find some of what they're talking about here in terms of light, in, in light of where we are in terms of the volatility. The New York-based firm's bullish outlook clashes, excuse me, with that of UBS Global Wealth Management, which has gone underweight on equities for the first time since the euro area crisis. The Swiss asset manager cut its stock positioning relative to high-grade bonds to reduce its exposure to trade wars and political uncertainty. Global Chief Investment Officer Mark Hathele, maybe, wrote in an August 25th note to investors. Positive earnings delivery, J.P. Morgan stresses, is a key to ensure that market pullbacks don't become extended. I would agree there. You know, we're talking about the consumers are driving this economy. You know what else is driving this economy? These companies just keep delivering on earnings. So you want to, you know, drive this market forward? We're going to have to continue to see that. Consensus profit projections are rather conservative, according to strategists who noted that an outright earnings contraction was historically experienced only during recessions. It's too early to expect the new, next U.S. recession, and one should be constructive on equities, they wrote. Now, you got to take into consideration who's telling you this, right? They're in the market. They have a vested interest of stocks trading higher, of course. But they're giving their take. They're sending it out to their customers. And to jump over, as I said, Fed Fund Futures, here we go. So, next meeting, September 18th. The odds of a 25 basis point cut, 94%. Now, yesterday on the program, 
Now, this is where the odds of a 50 basis point cut, 5.7%. Yesterday, I believe these numbers were about 84% for a 25 basis point, and as high as 15%. So that curtailing a bit, curtailing a bit. Now the market just really heavily pointing, as it was yesterday, but even more so, to a 25 basis point cut. But things really get interesting when you start getting out here further. When you dig into October, okay, October, the odds that we only end up with one cut over the next two meetings are less than 50% at 40, basically 39.8. The odds that we get two cuts in two meetings are 56.9%. The odds that we get three cuts, basically, as in we get 75 basis points over the next two meetings somehow, there's a chance. It's greater than zero. It's priced into that market. And then when you start getting into things, the odds that by December, the third meeting, that we get three rate cuts, 37%. The odds that we get two rate cuts over the next three meetings, 46%. You add those two up, you're at about almost 85% when you, especially when you add in the one here. Rate cuts, folks, coming down the line. And if we just keep crushing on earnings, I don't see why the Fed just keeps needing to cut rates, but we'll see what happens. September 18th, right around the corner. And we're pulling up this chart. Where we are in the markets, we'll get there. We got higher markets, folks. We're coming back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Tom out this morning. Again, Tom going to be back for his program live this afternoon, noon from 3 till 5. Checking back in on the markets. S&P's up about five points. We're seeing a little bit of a pullback here from when we opened the program. Dow Jones up 66 points, trading at 25,965. Now under that 26,000 mark from where we started the program. NASDAQ up 34 points, trading at 78.88. We've seen the 10-year even tick up a bit. Now up eight ticks at 131.01. Getting a little bit of acceleration in gold. Up $5.60 at 15.4270. And oil up 68 cents at 54.32. Jumping back to some of the news of the day. Papa John's soaring as they have a new chief executive naming Arby's president Rob Lynch. So struggling pizza maker Papa John's International appointed Arby's president Rob Lynch as CEO, naming an outsider as it further breaks from its founder John Schnatter. Schnatter? Yeah, I believe so. Lynch, a fast food industry veteran, will replace Stevie Ritchie. It's the biggest shakeup since activist shareholder Starboard Value set its sights on the pizza company. In a statement, the chairman, Jeff Smith, cited Lynch's proven record transforming organizations and realizing the growth potential of differentiated brands. Papa John's, which operates about 5,300 locations. Man, we love our pizza. I love my pizza delivery. Why not, right? 5,300 locations globally has been facing slowing sales with revenue declining 12% in 2018. So Snatter, whose image had once been deeply ingrained with the company's marketing, I'm sure we're all familiar with those ads of Papa John's, big on the NFL at one point, agreed earlier this year to resign from the board and dismiss a lawsuit related to his departure last year as chairman. Papa John's woes grew, grew last summer after, and it was just repeated, Founder used a racial slur in the conference call, which he had taken out of said was taken out of contents, none context, excuse me. Nonetheless, he departed the company. New management team is usually a pretty good opportunity, and you're seeing it reflected in the stock price now. You have an analyst talking about. So Papa John shares will jump over to the chart in a moment. Up about 7.6% today on that. And Arby's, I'm not a huge Arby's fan myself, fast food in general. But uh, their brand in general, um, they've done well to kind of rebrand themselves, drive sales, so forth. So maybe they're looking for this president, Robbie, Rob Lynch, was it? Yes, Rob Lynch coming in. He might be what they need. Up about 7.6%. .7 the stock had already climbed 10%. This year, through Monday's close, after declining the past two years, Starboard had invested $250 million in Papa John since February. Smith, Starboard's CEO, became chairman of the pizza maker when it took the stake, and the pizza maker's shares fell 29% in 2018 and 34% in 2017. So Lynch joined Inspired Brands, owned Arby in 2013 as the roast beef, roast beef sandwich chain's chief marketing officer. Before that, he worked for Procter & Gamble and Yum Brands, talk about two giant companies, as vice president of brand marketing for Taco Bell. He was appointed president of Arby's in 2017, overseeing the marketing operations and development. So at Arby's, Lynch led the chain's heavy meat-focused marketing and bold ad campaign that poked fun at vegetarians. Arby's had more than 30 Excuse me, Arby's has more than 3,300 restaurants across the world. In 2014, Arby's hit social media marketing gold when it started a back and forth with recording artist Pharrell Williams over Twitter over his hat, which resembles the, the chain's logo. You got to love what can uh, really drive a viral hit these days in, in terms of really just focusing on a musician's hat and somehow driving that. We luckily got our first big win just from being tuned in when we saw Pharrell wearing an Arby's hat at the Grammys. We click, quickly sent a, sweet, a, a tweet to Pharrell and our conversation went viral. Starboard's known for its turnaround of Olive Garden's Darden restaurants. Smith's proxy fight to replace Darden's directors included nearly a 300-page PowerPoint presentation that called for several specific changes at the Italian dining chain. And so maybe this was, you know, it's not going to be an easy turnaround for Papa John's. We talk about it all the time in terms of, you want to talk about delivery right now, you have a million options. I use Uber Eats myself, and they offer almost everything, almost anywhere you are. That is really hitting some of these pizza delivery companies. You only used to have a few options, folks, as we all know, when you wanted food hot delivered to your door, and now you have so many options. Nonetheless, they're facing woes internally that don't even have to do with the competition. So including adding salt to the water when cooking pasta, just talking about what he did at Darden's Olive Garden, Smith took over as chairman of Darden, and the company embarked on an effort to improve its lagging performance, including spinning off its real estate portfolio. Richie, Schnatter's one-time protege, took over the role of Papa John's CEO in January 2018 when his boss stepped down. And a tough role, 
excuse me, to Phil, of course. That came a few months just after Schneider went after the NFL, and he dug his feet into the controversy of players kneeling. That not, of course, helping the stock as you get into that controversy. Schneider, the long, long the largest shareholder, has been reducing his stake in Papa John's, recently selling more than $30 million, according to the filing. He still controls almost 17% of the company's shares, while Starboard holds about 15%. So to jump over to that chart, see how it's hitting it this morning. P Z Z A, 46.75. And so this is a daily chart going back 2018. I assume this is probably some of where that escalation really set off in terms of digging his feet into the controversy. And to put this back even a little bit longer time frame, we'll put it on, let's go back 20 years because it had quite a run up. Pizza delivery from 2010, you're trading at 15 bucks. And let's expand this a little bit talk about some volatility you make it all the way up to 90 at the end of 2016 and man that's where they say during 2017 we just saw the numbers right what was it about 34 percent it tanks down and then again that tank continues in 2018 you have got quite a bounce but man you don't have to be a technician to draw the line this is a downward trend folks lower highs across the board and we have not broken that trend so yeah this is a weekly chart you know, it's quite a week we're having this week in terms of the pop this week. The low being 43.14. We're now sitting at 46.77. To put this back on a daily chart a little bit closer, we'll put it on a one-year daily. We're up about 7.1% right now. We're $3.13, trading at 4705 But, man, I mean, we're really only back to where we were just trading at on August 9th. But maybe a little bit of hope for Papa John's as they got a new CEO at their helm. In terms of what else we have happening in the market, how about this? I kind of had to take a, a pause and say, so Philip Morris in talks to reunite with Altria in an all-stock deal. Folks, cigarettes, I hope you're not smoking cigarettes out there. If you are, it's about the worst thing you can do for your health. Get off them, you know, do your best because we all know it's about the worst thing you can do. And that's why Philip Morris, they had spun off Altria. So and now it looks like they're in talks to bring them back in. Philip Morris, the maker of Marlboro cigarettes in overseas markets, is in merger talks with Altria about a deal that would reunite the tobacco giants more than 10 years after they split their operations. Altria shares surged the most since October of 20, 2008 on the news, rising as much as 11%, whereas Philip Morris declined as much as 7.6%, the most since December. Companies broke apart more than a decade ago, bowing from pressure to U.S. investors who wanted higher dividends and more share buybacks. The move also pitched as a way to set free, faster-growing overseas operations while the U.S. business was entangled in smoker lawsuits. Yeah, they had more ability to kind of access the overseas markets where they weren't dealing with all these lawsuits that had to do with cigarettes. But times have changed. Altria has recently diversified its portfolio with investments in vaping and cannabis, giving the company more growth potential, even as fewer people smoke cigarettes. Some analyst investors have argued for years that the company should get back together, a move that would give Philip Morris more U.S. exposure. We'll finish looking at this story after the break. But pretty remarkable. Times have changed. It looks like they might trade trying to bring that company back into the helm. Stay tuned, folks. Dow up 89. S&Ps right now, positive by five. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Back, folks, we got the S&Ps right now positive by five, Dow Jones positive by 69. We got the Nasdaq positive by 33. Just to jump back in real briefly and finish up that story. So Altria, Philip Morris, maybe thinking about getting back together. So there's been speculation that the companies might be, might get back together on Monday. Wells Fargo publishing a research note that said a deal could make sense now, in part because Altria has a stake in the vaping company Juul. Philip Morris had a market value of nearly $121 billion as it closed the trading yesterday, while Altria was worth about $88 billion. The reunification would combine two of the most popular smoking alternative products, IQOS, IQOS maybe, and Juul. Familiar with Juul because they're pretty big here. I don't not myself personally, but familiar with the brand. Icos, it seems like, is the overseas. So Philip Morris has been plowing billions of dollars in promoting Icos, maybe I'm pronouncing it, but a heat not burn product used by millions of consumers outside the U.S. Altria, meanwhile, has invested 12.8 billion, with a B, billion, in e-cigarette start, startup, excuse me, e-cigarette upstart Juul Labs, which has cap catapulted itself to the U.S. industry leader in smoking alternatives in just a few years. So I'm going to bring in just a couple of the stories. I'm not sure if you're all aware, but just recently there have been quite, uh, come on, where are we there? That's not what we wanted. There we go. So you have the first death linked to vaping reported amid escalating illnesses. So there's this wave of people very young getting sick across the country and they can't quite figure out yet w what is going on and it's all tied somehow to vaping though so you have in this this article from august 24th you have 193 cases this summer of a mysterious vaping related respiratory illness which is now responsible for a death of a patient in illinois um we don't have to get into the full details of it i mean vaping is so new folks you know it took a while for cigarettes to really understand the long-term ramifications, how bad it is. And I wonder, you know, if you're smoking cigarettes, yeah, it might be worth it to try and get off them and vape. But don't think that you can just start vaping and it's just uh, harmless. So there's another story on the post and this one from August 24th as well. I happen to read this one over the weekend, which is why I just dug it out. And you have a 20 year old going from an enthusiast of a hiker to on death's door within days. And the only thing they could figure out that he was vaping and it just kind of digs out. I mean, they had to have an artificial lung pulling basically blood out of his system to go through the lung, to give it oxygen, to give him a chance to kind of rebuild that lung and repair his lungs. Fortunately, it looks like this gentleman, Alexander Mitchell, being a 20-year-old hiker, that he will recover. If you're interested, folks, Google those, check them out. But uh, pretty tough when you start seeing these cigarette companies getting into vaping 
combining their assets and plowing back into this market, especially when some of these vaping companies really hitting the younger market, which we have worked so hard to put a dent into. So we'll see how that shakes out for sure. What else we have going on? Jumping over to the markets. I wanted to dig in. I referenced it briefly, just some of the news items that you'll hear about the day. We had an opinion piece that Bloomberg had put out with former New York Fed Governor Bill Dudley. And he's catching a little flack for this, and maybe he should. We all have our opinions. But his point in here is that the Fed should not encourage Trump's trade war. So this is an opinion piece to reiterate. You're going to hear some rhetoric about this today. But basically the main point saying the Fed's monetary policymakers typically take what happens outside their realm as a given and then make the adjustments needed to pursue their goals as stable prices and maximum employment. And his point is kind of that if the Fed keeps cutting rates because of the trade concerns then that's only going to allow a further destruction of trade concerns that would allow that would then further hurt the economy and at some point the fed is going to be able to pull that one out now the tough part here is that you want the fed to be nonpartisan folks okay and that's you know it almost seems satirical to say that in terms of how hard president trump continues to bring his rhetoric towards the fed and what he wants it's supposed to be a nonpartisan non-reacting to politics institution that's what it should be and this kind of adding fuel to that fire and kind of you know if you think that the fed is biased against the president you have the new york fed governor the, excuse me the former new york fed governor coming out and kind of talking about politics and things in terms of enabling the president by doing that nonetheless i want to bring it up you're going to hear some about it today as uh, it's an opinion piece from the former, not just a governor, the former New York Fed governor, a big one for sure. What else do we have going on out there? How about J.P. Morgan weighing a sale of one billion AARP credit card portfolio? So J.P. Morgan considering selling the credit card portfolio it built through an almost three-decade partnership with the AARP, the nonprofit representing 38 million people. The sale would include roughly one billion in credit card receivables. The people said, asking not to be identified because the discussions are private. Alliance Data Systems Corp is among those interested in the portfolio. One of the people said. Representatives from J.P. Morgan, Alliance Data, and the AARP declined to comment. Not surprising there. J.P. Morgan's AAP report reward card offers users 3% cash back on dining and gas purchases, 1% back on all other sales. The nonprofit, for, formerly known as the American Association of Retired Persons, that's interesting, that's what I thought it was still known as, is known for its clout in American politics, focusing on issues affecting people over the age of 50. Alliance Data is looking to build up its private label credit card and payments business after agreeing to sell its Epsilon Data unit to Publicis Group. SA this year for $4.4 billion. In June, the company named Melissa Miller, who previously led the card services business to be president and chief executive officer. Alliance Data stock has slumped about 50% since the start of last year on concerns that its fate is closely tied to mall retailers, now struggling as consumers shop more online. So the company, which has historically issued credit cards through its community bank subsidiary, has said it hopes to increase its stockpile of credit card receivables to more than 20 billion from 17.6 mid-year. It acquired several portfolios in June that added more than 900 million, executives told analysts. We're seeking healthy verticals and brands, Miller said at the time, noting that companies, noting the company has been using partnerships with Alta Beauty, Sephora, Wayfair to increase its presence in the beauty, home goods, and e-commerce categories. Still, J.P. Morgan, the AARP credit card, is a relatively small portfolio. The bank is the nation's largest credit card issuer, check this out, boasting $158 billion in outstanding credit card, excuse me, in outstanding card loans at the end of the second quarter. And again, this one only representing about a billion dollars. You have Alliance Data looking to increase their receivables to 20. They're sitting at about 17.6. That would push them closer to 19. And uh, it's, it's recently offered more rewards on a card with intercontinental hotel groups and introduced a new card for business owners with Southwest. Pretty remarkable. J.P. Morgan, $158 billion in credit card debt, folks. That is a problem we have in this country. And hopefully, if you're out there, that's the easiest way to get a return on your money is to pay off your credit cards. Because whether you're dealing with 17%, 19%, 26%, you pay off those credit cards, you're effectively making that money that you're not going to be paying to the banks. 
Recapping where we are on the markets, we're seeing a little bit of a slide back here. We started off the 10 o'clock program. You had the Dow up 100 points. We're now up about 49. You had the S&Ps up about 10 points at 10 a.m. We're now up about 3. NASDAQ now up 27 points, trading at 78.81. Notes and bonds just continue to higher price and lower yield. As we go to break to check out that 10-year, again, pretty remarkable, folks. We are sitting at a yield. Is there a 1.4 handle? There sure is. As we've seen that price tick up, we're now, and this is the yield again, we came on the program at 10 o'clock. We're up as 1.51. We're now sitting at 1.49% on that 10-year yield. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back, back. We'll finish up this program, get into some more headlines as we wrap it up. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. back folks and to finish up this program we're going to jump around a few things real quick so we're sitting on a 10-year yield right now 1.498 pretty remarkable when you go back a year we were as high as 3.23 percent within the last 365 days a far cry from that level right now jumping to a few stories insiders are selling stock like it's 2007 so i was checking out this story corporate insiders have sold an average of 600 million of stock per day in august 
August is on track to be the fifth month of the, month of the year, which insider selling tops $10 billion. The only other time that has happened was 20, 2006 and 2007, the period before the last bear, bear market in stocks. Now, the article makes a point here that even though the stock market is much larger than it was in 2007, so the $10 billion mark may not mean as much as it now as it did then, you got it's common sense. The acceleration of insiders heading for the exits could indicate concern about the challenges ahead, especially as the U.S. China trade war threatens to set off a recession. Just keep that in mind when you see those articles about JP Morgan saying stocks may be poised to go higher. If they're so poised to go higher, folks, you don't have insiders selling uh, with this type of volatility pretty close to near we've been for highs. Pretty remarkable. What else we got going on? Check out this article I was looking. So you got Bitcoin. SEC's chief crypto skepticism sets up Facebook clash over Libra. So it's pretty hard, interesting. The scene was straight out of an era of Bitcoin mania. A man on an Amtrak train in New York speaking loud, loudly into his mobile phone, discussing a digital token. And who was sitting right next to him? Unknown to the crypto entrepreneur, sitting a few seats away was SEC Commission Chairman Jay Clayton, the U.S. tops market, market cop. And he just goes in how that encounter... You know, said maybe he needs some regulation in that market. And to sum it up, Bitcoin right now, a little calm, 10,158. Stay tuned, folks. You heard Kevin Hanks at the top of the hour. He's going to be, they're going to be talking about Ford. They're going to be talking about Fiat. They're going to be setting up trades for some serious yields. So check it out right after this programming. Have a great Tuesday.